All right. Okay. Thank you for that. Joining us. We're almost on time. Um, the whole process of this is this is a discussion. This is not a promotion. This is not a the PR exercise. This is a discussion. Yeah. And I think what's important is I'm going to start with Felix for the very simple fact that you were sitting all the way through the first session with the CEOs scribbling notes. I left them there somewhere. <laughs> but I just need to know what was your thought process through the CEO discussion because it, it's where we can really have a proper conversation because it will affect the rest of the panel. Felix. Well, OK. Thanks. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to share a bit of feedback to the session this morning, which it was very interesting to, um, and to listen to it. I, I learned a lot about um, the specificities of the sector. I mean, I, I, I knew about the specificities of the sector before, but in the discussion, what comes out is um, the, the nautical industry is special in so far as if, if we look at it from the decarbonization context, especially, but then there are other topics, of course. Um, uh, we're looking at a small part of emissions, but the sector as such is still um, emitting and, and is still producing, uh, I mean, mainly running on fossil fuel engines. But uh, things like electrification, hybrid uh, uh, methanol, um, hydrogen, and so on are, are much more difficult to, to bring to a small sector than if you do it at big scale. And um, that's something that is a, is a challenge that, uh, and also, how you compare performance and environmental performance between different industries is also a challenge. How do you actually avoid that each company says, OK, I'm, I'm so good at the environment. I'm, I'm having a, a zero emission engine here and a zero there, and we're reducing emissions. <clears throat> but then the other one, how do you compare? And, and I've, I really like this idea of um, establishing common uh, performance indicators that you can compare across the industry how um, actually we see the innovation coming into the sector and, and improving the environmental performance. How do you think industry can partner, though, with Brussels? What, what is the way we need to work? Because you, you mentioned something in an email to me about you, you communicate, but are people listening? Or are people reading the communiques? This is, to me, one of the, the disconnects. Mm -hmm. OK, I'm going to be frank, but also pick up what was in the discussion this morning. Um, we have, in the European Commission, we have adopted what we call a, a new approach to a sustainable blue economy, saying what we call the blue economy, the maritime economy, needs to transform itself and needs to move towards decarbonization, climate neutrality by uh, 2050, to biodiversity restoration, to circularity. And um, uh, this is a policy framework that doesn't just apply to the nautical industry, to the nautical sector, but to everything that moves on the water. Um, so we need to see uh, this transformation going through different industries and in taking inspiration from different industries. I think not everybody was here this morning. Uh, I gave the example that uh, we are now seeing uh, the first building of sailing cargo vessels that actually replace, uh, reduce their emissions by 80, 90 percent only by using sails for a, a cargo vessel. Now we are speaking of a small car carrier with 200 cars, which is being built. But there are research projects that are looking at carrying 7,000 cars and more. And though this technology comes from professional and um, competitive sailing. It's, it's from one industry, it's taken to the other. This morning, I learned that maybe there's a lot to learn from the trucking industry, for the engines, for, for, for things. So there's collaboration across different sectors and talking to each other, which we want to facilitate and um, which we want to bring together. And, and you were mentioning the triangle with the regulators. Um, so the regulator needs to be there as a facilitator of bringing people together. I can come later to some enablers but, but, that we have put in place. But has that ever happened in your experience, that level of collaboration? <coughs> it actually does. I can give you one example. We, we have set up a, um, because we are seeing a lot of innovation, especially at sea, especially in, in, in new technologies coming to uh, maritime industries. And we have set up, um, a financing instrument that supports small and medium enterprises that want to innovate. Um, and we are bringing them together with investors. And then we try to scale up. And it's, a, it's like a learning academy. We, we have more than 1,200 enterprises now that have come together from everything, from ocean observation, from aquaculture, from uh, shipping, from uh, renewable energies. Mm. And um, we are seeing that 
the more and more we bring these people together, they actually talk to each other and they learn from each other and they say, oh, that's a technology that would be actually interesting for me to use. Uh, like uh, in, in shipping, you have uh, companies that produce bubbles uh, to go under the keel to make to reduce the uh, emissions. Right. I don't know how, how, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know how much that is maybe applied in the voting sector already or not, but, but that's something where, where um, I think we, we play a role, not only giving access to finance, and somebody was saying, so you are coming with the funds. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry. The, the, the public funds and public funding is only ever going to be a drop in the ocean. And we need <laughs> access to find pri private finance, uh, that, because that's where the money sits and that's where the money is from. And with this Blue Invest, we want to attract the private finance to complement. Yeah. <clears throat> OK, let's open the discussion now. I'm going to ask each of the panel, who not Felix, to just introduce themselves and give a little snapshot Michael, you start off, please. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, my name is Michael Köhler. I'm the CEO of Silent Yachts. Uh, we produce um, electrically powered, solar powered boats uh, from tender size, uh, four meters uh, in uh, bigger yachts, starting with 60 foot as the smallest one, 80, 82, 102, 120 foot, and now latest model is 165 foot. Uh, the boats are solar powered uh, and having an electric drivetrain. Thank you. Right. I'm Dean Smith, uh, COO for uh, uh, D Marin. We're a group of infrastructure owners, marina operators and owners. Uh, we have 10,000 clients, uh, exclusively leisure. Uh, we have a mix of um, uh, commercial tenants supporting uh, that leisure activity. And we have a very clear ESG program, which it looks at trying to find alternative solutions for power, resources, and utilities. Yeah, I'm Bruno Chiboyan. I'm the Group Beneteau CEO for six months now. And the Group Beneteau is um, a worldwide, work, a worldwide leader on the sailboat, which we do not talk about since this morning because we talk more about the, the engine boats and especially the big boats. We make a motorboat from 6 to 25 meters. Uh, and uh, we, we also make charter, we also make boat club, we also are present on the different way of usage uh, from a young guy to retired family. So the sustainable questions in the DNA of the group, but there are not one answer. There are as many answers as technology are available on the shell, and there are as many needs as many type of usage of Nautic. So the complexity we discussed this morning um, about how to unify the way we measure is even bigger if we, depend, if we look at the way the market is segmented. Sorry for this short introduction. <laughs> That's good, thank you. And Hans. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Hans Roelands, uh, general manager for Sea Ray International. Sea Ray is a boat brand part of the Brunswick Group. Uh, we do not only do boats, we have 18 boat brands. Uh, we also do engines. Mercury Marine is part of our group, but also companies like Mastervolt, battery power, rely on batteries. Uh, so as a group, we, of course, we look at the same challenges as, uh, as, uh, as the, the colleagues here. And we try also to integrate as many companies as possible and technologies as possible to make, to look at the future and to work, uh, to work for the future. Um, where battery powered and electrification is, of course, a, a very important part of that, uh, of that process. Okay, thank you. So listen, we had this morning, we had San Lorenzo, Princess, Azot Benetti Group, and San Lorenzo. No, Benetti. <laughs> so we had a collaboration of four of the most important builders in the marketplace talking about the disconnect between the manufacturing process and infrastructure, right? Where can the boats go with green energy and all the various requirements that they have? Dean, what is the future of infrastructure? How do we change that to adapt for the next generation of boats? Well, there's probably two or three key um, areas that will influence our ability to adapt. Um, one is the uh, kind of licensing and operating requirements. So it's very common in the Mediterranean to have concession agreements that have a limited term. 
that limited term uh, dissuade you, disincentivize you to invest in future project, projects if the payback for those uh, investments are beyond your concession term. So that's quite difficult to, uh, to navigate around. Um, there's the time uh, required for bureaucratic sign-off. Um, we've got a, a few projects for solar right now that we can't quite seem to uh, get signed off at a regional level, let alone a national level. Uh, the investments there, we're not looking for funding particularly, we're just looking for the consents uh, to deliver these, th these projects, and they're very difficult to bring to life. Um, and also a lack of understanding on our part of what uh, these groups are going to need. Uh, you know, what facilities and services will you need? Trying to create megawatts and uh, kilowatts of, of power is not easy. Um, we certainly don't want to take it from the grid if we can at all help it. Uh, so an early insight into uh, what's going to be needed so we can try and structure what we're uh, building. Uh, to meet those needs uh, when the build schedules come to life, because we might be talking one year, we might be talking 10 years, we're, we're not quite sure. So we're a little bit in the dark. This forum's fantastic in that we can uh, start having these conversations, uh, but we also need some help um, uh, to get things signed off quite quickly, get feedback uh, from um, the policymakers to make sure that we're doing the right thing in the right place. Uh, infrastructure does not happen overnight, it takes time. Um, digging holes out of the uh, the land is quite a significant task, an expensive task, and you want to make sure that you're building your facilities in the right way. Yeah. For small facilities like uh, general services, not a problem. Um, general construction for uh, those commercial units and commercial support, quite easy. But uh, when you're looking at yachts that need ex extreme amounts of power, um, extreme amounts of services, then uh, uh, we, we need to be in early to understand what those needs are going to be and how we're going to get them. We're willing to. We're, you know, most of the, the interesting point uh, Felix was making before about the, the shipping was that that's very, very commercial. Um, what we're talking about is, is exclusively leisure. Uh, it's discretionary. Uh, no one needs to do this, really, uh, but they do, and we're, we're delighted that they do. Uh, but there's a real disconnect and confusion between the, the objectives. Are we trying to reduce the commercial transport and logistics um, uh, CO2 level, or are we looking at leisure? Leisure is, more, and more often than not, uh, completely privately funded. We have the funding, we have the innovation, we have the skill, uh, but we need to understand the, the, the route, the road, the, the path. Michael, you're smirking or smiling or <laughs> mouth watering, I don't know. Which <laughs> Now, actually, um, I think we all agree the future is electric. Uh, this is, I think, in the car industry, there is no doubt anymore. Uh, the same will come, of course, with a delay of several years, maybe even decades, uh, in the nautical industry. And from our perspective, the solution is decentralization, uh, because if all the boats become electric and all plug in somewhere, good luck. Yes. Good luck, yeah? It won't work. So the solution, sorry you said it's not an advertisement uh, meeting here, uh, it's, uh, the solution is what, what we are doing from our perspective. Yeah? And I think uh, it's the same solution even for marinas. Uh, everything should be decentralized, so the, most of them should be uh, at least partly off-grid. Uh, that means they, they, should be, they should be able to produce the power they need for themselves and for the clients, which are the big boats. Um, produce it themselves yeah. uh, because then they are not uh, relying on the grid. In, in good cases, they could even supply to the grid and even the boats, same as with the cars. The boats themselves could become uh, storage. Yes. Uh, if, if there is only crew on the boat and there is a big storage, uh, battery storage in the boat, uh, the boat could deliver power even to the grid, if they know for sure that they are not going out for the next three days, then they can deliver. And if there is excess power, they can get it in. The only thing is this needs to be attractive by uh, controlling the, the price of the kilowatt hour. Because uh, everybody should become a producer and a consumer and buy when it's cheap and give it out when it's, when it's, when it's, uh, when it's expensive. Yeah. I do the same at home. 
since a couple of months, I earn more money with the few solar panels on the roof than I spent because I consume in the night when it's cheap and I produce during daytime when it's unbelievably expensive. Yeah. I, think, I think that's a fantastic link to how Carla de Maria Rodriguez from San Lorenzo was saying that changing perception of yachting yes. is a critical path we have to be on. Yes. If every marina across the Mediterranean, when there's hundreds of them, yes. full of thousands of boats, yes. doing nothing, right? And you know this, Dean. They're so, sitting some there. of the time. <laughs> no, but a large percent of the time, yachts are doing very little. Yes. And as you say, Michael, there's an opportunity to say to policymakers, yachts can contribute to the grid or to the local population. Yeah. So to me, there's a, a new connection to be explored. Yeah. Because at the moment, there's a have yachts and have nots where there's a perception issue of yachts are just sitting there for the rich. But if you can change the landscape and say yachts are giving back and helping marinas create, be self-sufficient on the energy topic, yeah. we change the, the language. We change the relationship with the local economy. Yeah. Uh, I think, Felix, this is something that every boat can become part of that conversation. The boat can be a positive, not a negative, especially at government level. I would say it's the same with, uh, with marinas as well. And I mean, you already hinted to it, but um, that made me think this morning when you, when you were asking um, Cornelius from Team Malizia, uh, how much time do we have? Well, <laughs> we have, and, and he said, well, action is needed now. And um, that leads me back, okay, we have agreed objectives from the international community. We have this climate agreement of Paris 2015, just eight years ago. Um, by 2050, we want to become carbon neutral. Um, we want to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees, if possible. Um, and for that, we have a certain carbon budget. And with every breath we take, in a sense, but with every fossil fuel that we burn, we are deducing that carbon budget. And if we burn more now, it's got, the time is going to be shorter. So yeah. if we act now and change, the time we may be, have a bit more time. But that means it's not 2050 anymore. It's coming closer. It's 2030. That's in seven years' time. So, so here, um, that means every contribution counts. And I, I'm, I'm being a bit long now, sorry. So uh, <laughs> at sea, we have the power of the sun, of the wind, of the waves. Yep. Um, so solar is not the only thing. I mean, oh. it's, I, I mentioned already sailing vessels, but I, I'm also working in, in the commission. We are also working on emerging technologies like wave power. And you can actually install those as wave breakers. You have things that move, yep. that produce electricity, and, and, and that to, to use that locally yeah. without um, yeah, actually going on the grid, that's, that's uh, something that I think everybody can contribute. Yeah, I, th I, think, I think the point is, <coughs> and Bruno, you mentioned sailboats earlier on. Um, I think there are so many sources of energy that are ignored at the moment or not used efficiently that we need to stop repeating the same mistake. So, Bruno, from a sailboat perspective, because I think this is another topic we haven't really touched on yet, where is the sailboat market heading? Because uh, to me, it's the, the free energy system we're not using well. We, 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 we used to. We don't talk about electrification when we talk about uh, sustainability. We talk about alternative propulsion, and the first alternative propulsion is wind. So, so second, the question is, um, is not uh, future will be electric. F electric will be part of the future, but will not be the only solutions. It will be a combination of alternative propulsions. Electric, for some needs, will be part, for some will not. The way we produce electricity, the way we produce energy, it's not one scenario. It's a combination depending on the segment and depending on the type of usage, even of on the same segment. Um, it's a good point to use the boat to feed the electricity uh, network. It needs infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The speed of electrification, the speed of alternative propulsion in the boat industry will be slower than the, the automotive, which is a fast market because it's a big volume, yeah. and it went extremely slowly. I come from the automotive industry, and we are now at a slightly significant tech rate that we targeted from decades. And now that we are there, we start to wonder, is it the real solution? No, it's not. It's one of the solutions. So, so yes, we have to start. Uh, the, 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 the infrastructure evolution 
uh, in the marinas, but it's not a shift from one historical diesel-like solution to the full electric. The full electric will change the way we use as well. When you are an electric car, you don't drive the same way than in a diesel car. Uh, when you are in an electric boat, electric sailboat, you don't use the same energy the same way. Probably the same, maybe you can tell us more, but the usage change from our traditional owner to a solar uh, panel owner. Uh, so yes, sailboat will be probably ahead. Uh, we started with uh, Torquedo, starting from small boats, then bigger boats. We also went with uh, excess as well. So yes, the penetration is going further, it's going forward. It's not only a question of propulsion. As we said, it's a question of life cycle assessment, an overall life cycle assessment. Is it useful to storage a lot of energy in a battery that we use once a week, a year? So, here again, depending on the, on the type of usage. So we, we, as we said, in this boat industry where the volume is extremely low, if you want to move forward, you need to multiply by 10 your energy to move forward. And uh, if on top of that, the infrastructure is raising question, then even when you are ready, the customer is not. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's difficult to say what will be the roadmap. We have to push everyone in every direction so that every year we move a bit. Uh, so, so it's a big challenge, but the, 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 the most it is part of the strategy of everyone, uh, the more it will start to move. And, and the question is, how can we all together, the, the, the big boats, the small boats, the, 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 the motor boats, the sail boats, harmonize the way we count. Mm. There was a shift in the auto, the diesel gate. And from this day, the CO2 emission ratio was the trigger of everyone. There is a KPI, we follow it, and everyone, good or not, is the one we follow. Agree, agree. Defining on the average use, the average usage of the car or the, or, of the boat. And, and this, we are very fragmented markets. So how do we talk together, not only the five of us, but the thousands of us? What's the weight of Bruxelles? I, I don't talk American. <laughs> uh, this is another story. Uh, but at least let's find a way to harmonize the way we count, not the way we move, the way we count. Let's, step, let's fix this way to count things on the life cycle assessment way, not only the, the usage part, the usage part, as we say, alternative propulsion on a sailboat is not at all the same ratio than on a motorboat. So there's no easy answer on your question, how do we handle? We probably will go further and quicker on the sail market than the powerboat. However, on the powerboat, we already go quicker than on the sailboat on inland waters. With Delphia for inland waters, probably on inland waters on Sea Ray or Four Winds brands with electric propulsion, probably not for five hours uh, ride, but for two hours, right, yes, depending on the way you use the power uh, and the, the way you optimize the time. Yeah. If you go max every time, it's short. If you go average, it's the same. If you go slowly, it's better. So, so it's always a question of equilibrium between the performance you expect and the optimal performance. Yeah, 100%. 100%. So Hans, how has the C-Ray operation or usage of yachts changed in the last five years? Well, as first of all, I, I would like to take maybe one step back. Yeah. And with what you started to say, Felix, is about cargo and commercial applications. And I think that is where the biggest gains are to start. Because we are we're always very full of ourselves because we have 17 holes filled here. <laughs> but we are a tiny business in, in, in everything that happens in the world. So, Yes, we want to strive um, to get greener and to get more CO friendlier, and we, that, that's, that's in everybody's um, strategy. But we are such a small business that it's, it's for us, it's, all these investments are huge to get small results. So I think if we focus on where the biggest gains are, that is, that is already very, that's already very good. The second thing is, Let's not forget that there's, all, there's a lot of small people that have small boats 
that cannot afford, because once you go electric, it's, it's, it's with the cars, it, it's expensive. <coughs> so we need to be careful that we're not, we want, we want as many people on the water as possible, in, from big 160 foot yachts up to a small canoe, whatever. We want to pe the people to be on the water. But let's be careful to not uh, kill that segment, which is a huge segment, because people start small and they grow in a boat. So we need to be very careful to, um, to, to keep on watching, to keep on watching that. Now, uh, as said, propulsion with uh, electric power, it's a challenge. Mm. Because driving a boat or powering a boat is like driving up a hill with your handbrake on and a trailer behind you. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what we compare it with. But for example, what we try to do at Sea Ray is you also have diesel generators on board that provide your electric power on board. We have developed a system that will guarantee you you have a whole day of usage with no generators anymore. The generator manufacturers will not be very happy with that, but that is something that we see is not <coughs> limiting usage for our customers, but it's part of that, what can we do to do our fair share of becoming more greener? <coughs> uh, we launched yesterday, or this afternoon, we will launch also an electric engine, an outboard, an electric outboard. It's, it's a small segment, but that's, those are the small things that we try to do to do our fair share of this. But I think we need to manage expectations on what we as, a, as an industry can do. Mm -hmm. and, th and that's only, that's only fair. Um, and we need to learn from the car business, we learn from the trucking business, and we can probably also learn from the commercial uh, business because what happens there in, 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 in magnitudes, we can use in our small boats, bigger boats, and the yachts. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, just well, it's true. It's true what you said. The, the, the one thing is uh, the propulsion. One thing is the way you live on the boat. We we don't live in a car. <laughs> I some, don't live some, in a car. Some people do. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so this uh, power of usage out of the propulsion period is a techno which is not something you can just carry over from auto or truck or bus. So, so that, that's what's new. So that's why it requires investment. Usually we adapt. The investment is to adapt existing solutions. Yeah. Here we have to create or to adapt existing, but which were not so close to our need. And that's where we need probably to, to to federate these investments, <coughs> not one shipyard doing it alone, so that the industry can benefit from it. So now but you know how we felt uh, 15 years ago when we developed the first boat. Because nowadays everything is available, believe me. You can get generators, everything is available on, on stock, off the shelf. 15 years ago it was not. Yeah. We really had to invent what we installed in our boats. And it was really self-designed because it simply did not exist at that time. Because we couldn't take anything from, from, a, from a car or from, from any other industry. Because as you just mentioned, we are not living in a car, but we live in a boat. In a car, you only need the propulsion and you need the 12 volt suppliers of a, the lights and, and uh, I don't know, and the radio, yeah? That's it. Uh, but on the boat, we need substantially more. So it's a huge difference. But however, this problem is solved. And I would like to add something to what we said before. Uh, one thing is, is the political situation that the, the base needs to be formed uh, regarding mi microgrid, what I mentioned before, microgrids and decentralization. But the other part is, the mindset of the people, it needs to, it needs to change. Uh, what you also mentioned, the, the, the consumption, the way uh, and the, the manner how the people consume the energy needs to change. And you mentioned before, in the solar boat, uh, it is for sure different than in, a, in the diesel-powered boat because you're more conscious of the energy that you're using yeah. because you know somehow it needs to come in of course, you have a generator, and the generator can do the job. But you don't want to use it. So you take care that you use it in a responsible, in a smart way. Yeah. And also, the design of the boat needs to change. Because windows, 
of that size, like, I don't know, Mangusta style, for example, yeah? Uh, so they are really almost horizontal, are very nice looking, yeah? Sleek, fast, powerful, good looking. But it's a greenhouse. Uh, you, get, you get roasted underneath. You need unbelievable air conditioning systems uh, to cool it down to a level that you, you feel comfortable. And this, I think, is one of, the, one of the main points. The design of the boat even has to change completely to reduce the power consumption of the boat even when it's not driving. When it's only standing in a marina, you see the power cables of that size on the big yachts, not the plugs, the cables, yeah? yeah, yeah. The cables, unbelievable cables, because they only run the aircon. And why? Why the hell? Do you need so much aircon in a house of the same square meters? Probably not. Why? Better insulated and smarter design. And the problem is the design should somehow follow the function, which is not the case, because it's not sexy. We want sexy boats, and they need to look sleek and, and fast. Uh, if, you, if you want to save energy, you should rethink and redesign the whole exterior appearance of a boat and many other technical aspects. And as you mentioned already before, it's not only one solution, it's many solutions, and you have to pull on many, many strings uh, to get to this goal. But as you said, it's a mind shift we yeah. have to take. Definitely. Because, because at the moment, every bit of communication you see in yachting is about speed, performance, sleek, sexy. Yeah. If you go into architecture, land architecture, there is almost a passion to reduce and reuse and recycle across every single type of office building, manufacturing plant, or yeah. engineering facility. So we've and got it a, works. The and people it works. accept it. Yeah, because the, the wider population understand yeah. that this is a positive. So I feel that there's an opportunity now to say, let's communicate in a smarter way. May I, may I ask you, do you know, do you know um, the, 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 the meaning behind the uh, Tesla models? There is a Model S, there is a Model 3, a Model X, a Model Y. Sexy. Sexy. <laughs> Only the E, he was not allowed because there is Jaguar E-type. So that's why it's a 3. It's a turned E. So sexy, this was the idea, and I think it's our goal uh, to make, to make uh, this technology sexy, that the people um, accept, uh, let's say, a, a different, I don't want to say uh, a less attractive, a different design uh, that consumes less energy uh, because it's sexy. Well, I, th I think the, the image of sexy has changed anyway yeah. across the world. Yeah. So I think that's a key topic as well in the whole this next generation thought process that sexy is smart. Sexy is also sol solving problems that we can be proud of. So I think these are things that become part of our future lang language. Dean, I'm gonna ask you a very simple question now, which I think is important to this topic, because we talked about operational profile and usage of vessels. Not necessarily with your marinas, but as a general consensus, how many yachts sit in a marina doing very little for most of their life. I, I think it's well understood that um, people are um, time poor. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's very difficult to make uh, good use of your yacht um, many, many, many times a week, month, or even season. Um, so a majority of yachts are underutilized. That, that's very true. And I don't think that uh, would, would surprise anyone. I think what's really interesting is that um, I have great faith in this industry and this sector of being innovative, by the way, and finding solutions. I think it's a resource that's uh, underappreciated by perhaps policymakers uh, because we're, these guys are solving problems every single day. Uh, I think what we do need is this word collaboration we were using at the, at the beginning, and we need this KPI. You mentioned the fact that we, when, when you're winning, when you're doing well, when you've got a sexy performance, it's against a particular KPI. And it could be fastest, longest, shortest, whatever it might be, but there's a KPI. Uh, we don't have that on this topic. Uh, we're not sure if what we're doing is beating the target. We're not sure if our innovation is actually delivering to an objective. We're independently in silos working with the best will in the world and the best um, uh, kind of intention uh, to do the best we can. You're right, we don't want to use generators. We don't want to connect to the grid. 
but we're not sure if that's absolutely the right thing. We're not quite sure. We're not quite sure if our decisions are the decisions that might benefit Beneteau, silent yachts. We're not sure if our decisions will benefit the, the policy that's been created in Brussels. Uh, it'd be great to know. I'd love to understand what it might be. And I'm sure if we did set a KPI and a target that motivates all the, you know, the, the maritime business to do well, we probably strive towards trying to hit that target. Uh, if it can be created, you can certainly count on us to, uh, to innovate and find solutions. I'm, I'm very sure of that. This industry is super creative. I mean, it's, uh, it's difficult to be extremely rational in a near-rational market. So we have to, there, there, there are some breakthroughs. We talked about electrification, we talked about some breakthrough in terms of uh, alternative propulsion, but that's right that a lot of the improvement would come from Kaizen improvement, from step-by-step -step improvement, from uh, design optimized for less consumption improvement. Mm -hmm. And after, there is a question, which is once we have designed for less um, consumption, can we make a bigger boat with the same engine? Yeah. Or, 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 or do we fight on the energy consumption reduction. And it's always an irrational, a rationalization of an irrational market. B buying a boat is not necessarily a rational decision. <laughs> so rationalize the process of energy consumption around is a huge task. But what has changed in the last five years, I would say, is that from uh, we have to follow what happened on the market, we have shift to, we have to take care that this market does not come down because we don't make the turnaround of the sustainability. Yeah. And, and that's true for us. Of course, we spend a lot of time in our last strategic plan. We spend a lot of time in the next one, not to make marketing, just to explain where we are. And somehow, sometimes, being sorry, we don't go as fast as we would like. But well, what we do is to transform our industry. Uh, and some communicate probably more than that, or communicated more than us uh, in the past. What's important is so that all what we do is going in these directions. And once this is launched, then it's the start of a reduction yeah. of the impact. Uh, what's the impact on Marina? It's difficult to say, but uh, Marina's market as well should also think about what can I help in this transformation? What can I do to help going in this transformation? Having an electric boat, having an electric car with no one, no, no place to plug is useless. Having an electric car with no place to plug is useless inland waters or on the sea. So, so it's going to move slowly, but if we don't accelerate quickly, it will never move. So that's why it's important to, to, to raise this point and to coordinate this point. KPI is one thing, but mo more than the, the KPI itself, the way we measure itself uh, is uh, probably to, to joint effort on what a Kaizen is not enough to go through. Felix. Yeah, we were focusing on emissions here. And, 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 and if we have fund for that, it's fine. Huh? Yeah, sorry? <laughs> if we have fund for that, it's fine. <laughs> we're very happy. We, we were focusing on emissions, but, but uh, interesting from Michael was the part also on efficiency and design. And um, that, that made me think of something completely different, um, which is also an initiative from the European Commission. It was actually a personal initiative from uh, the president, Ursula von der Leyen, who said, not only do we need to have this green deal with the objective to become carbon neutral in 2050, we need a change of shift in, in thinking. And so she said, and, and this is not just the sea, this is how we live, this is how we produce. And she said, I want to launch a new European Bauhaus. Very German idea, but <laughs> anyway, new European Bauhaus is the idea to design things differently with the climate change, with climate change in mind, with uh, heating in mind, with like orienting the big windows, not necessarily to the south, but uh, somewhere else. And here comes the design. So there's even a Bauhaus of the seas idea. So um, and and with prices and everything. So uh, if you have a good design, <laughs> you could even apply for a prize. In, in this context, I just wanted to. Uh, it's difficult to say where the that. source will be on the board. Yeah, with the <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> which brings me to another point, which is social sustainability. And maybe uh, I know that you were also going to go there at, yeah, at yeah, one yeah. point. Um, social sustainability, in the sense that um, what, what is the role of a marina, uh, for example? It's also not just to put your boat there. It's also to bring people to shore, to bring people from shore to sea, to bring. 
maybe the marina in a social context, uh, so not just in a, in a nice landscape, but, but near to a city or bring it into the city center. I, I think that's a topic that we could also um, expand on. Yeah, yeah and, and I agree with that because it's, it's as I, I, I just said, it goes from small fishing boats in aluminium up to the big yachts. So there's a, there's a whole range and the, the smaller your boats go, the, the more volume you have and the more people are implicated in that, in that hobby, in that passion, uh, because it's, it's, all, it's all about passion, why these people start boating. So let's not forget about that. It's, about, it's, it's probably more than the 80-20 rule. It's probably the 95-5 rule, where 95% is below 40 foot and a, and a totally different profile of user. I think the average usage of a power boat in Europe is 25 hours per year. Yeah. That's not a lot. That is hours, not days. Hours. 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 Yeah. hours. hours. So that, that is <laughs> that, not that, a lot. I know. That's I know un under power. But the anchor as well, or no, no, that's no, no. that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Under power. <laughs> so it's it's um, it, it's also a, a, an important thing to look at and, and how do and, and the social aspect. It's uh, because those are people, entry level boaters, uh, wanna wanna be part of a community. Uh, that's why, like Beneteau, we are fully engaged with uh, boat clubs where we try to lower. The, in, the, the entry level, make it easier for people to start boating, to, to taste, to get a taste of it, and to, to pick up that, that, that hobby and that product. Um, so it's, it's all, we, we need to, I think it's very important to, to look at what, where's the low hanging fruit, where are the biggest gains, where are the steps we can do. I mean, my headquarters is, is in Amsterdam. In 2025, Amsterdam will be combustion engine free, all right? Which is, if you look how many small boats are out there, with people who have a small sloop with a 2.5 horsepower, they will all have to go. And I am very curious how many boats, how many will be replaced. And that is going to be very few. And my heart bleeds when I don't see all these boats in the canals in Amsterdam. On the other hand, I see on every, every kilometer in the city, or even faster, there are charging stations to charge your boat. So that is available there, but it's gonna be it's gonna be a bloodbath in 2025, and and I'm, it it makes me it makes me sad because a lot of these people they go out on a Sunday, they they have a couple of beers, have a good day with their friends, and the the investment that they have to make to replace that boat. It that budget is not there. We see increasing inflation. We see, I mean, increasing uh, energy prices. So, the 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 budget that these people can spend on their hobby, passion, social aspect of their life, it's it's decreasing. Actually, budget is probably the the, the biggest point. What what you're mentioning, because it's a matter of fact that uh, an electric motor plus a battery uh, plus a charging system costs more than a and a fuel-based engine, whatever type, inboard, outboard, uh, electric is more expensive. So this will definitely um, change something in the, in the nautical landscape. And yeah. it's, it's more expensive because of the scaling issue that we have. Yes. And, and therefore, you see now in the, in the car business, you start to see brands coming at a, at a better price because the scale is there. But we. We are. We will never. We might reach that scale, but that's that's very far out. Yeah. That is that's that's for us a huge challenge, and we want to keep as many people engaged in our in our passion in our products. We want to keep them on the water, and at the same, it's it's kind of a paradox. We want to keep them on the water, but at the same time, we want to be, we want to do our fair share in in in, yeah. in reaching the targets in, in in 2050. So, but let's not, let's be careful. That's what I'm. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Because there's a, it's a, it's a, there's a lot of things linked at that industry. You have restaurants. You have marinas. You have service points. You have there's so much connected there, uh, and it's 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 under stress. But if I, if yeah, I may, please. if I may, just just a question. You were talking about Amsterdam having a local rule that 
uh, as from 25, there should be no combustion engines more in the waters. Because yes. that, that was, this, in this morning's panel also, the fact that there may be local rules coming up that may force yes. many people to move out and to move away. Yes. So, so there's, there's pressure mounting that is coming, which, which uh, of course, if we had this triangle of regulators and everything was dictated from Europe, as it so often is, which is not, but anyway, <laughs> um, because it's decided by the parliament and by the member states together, and then it comes to the rules, um, everybody would cry out. But this is the local level taking measures because they say this is too much. We have too much pollution. We have too much uh, emissions. Now, um, can I ask a question back? Because sure. uh, w um, I think it must be about 15, 20 years ago when the um, luminescent light bulb was uh, finally forbidden, which was so energy inefficient, it was mainly producing heat and, and, and not light. And everybody was crying out loud and people were hoarding these things at home. So we, we, I want to keep this because it's such a warm, nice light. <laughs> Okay, there was a period, a short period where we had very ugly light bulbs. But if you look at what can be done with light nowadays, and that's probably the same story as you say, 15 years ago you had to build everything yourself, but now you have so much on the market. Um, so rules help tra technological um, progress and development and, and more energy efficiency um, and scaling up. Absolutely. Because the prices have... All of our boats will have, have all LED lighting. Yeah. yeah. We all have it because it's easy to install, it's very efficient, but we didn't develop it. Yeah. Because it's again that scaling, that scaling thing. And we need to, I think we need to be careful that legislation is not, is not, yes, there's, there's pressure from legislation and that's fine because that helps driving directions. But let's be careful that we're not destroying something before that business can no, but that, that's, why, that's why the, the, the role of European communities to federate the, the, the different brands, the different shipyards, the different specialists that has the overall ecosystem in mind so that the, the move forward step by step is structured in such a way that it's realistic, that yep. it's not a, a disruptive breakthrough that changed the model. Yep. Uh, not only because we're afraid of changing the model, but, but because there is a, an overall ecosystem which is ahead of us before uh, inside and, 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 and distribution and around. And, but it has to move. So, so that's why sometimes we say uh, Bruxelles is not doing enough. Here we say Bruxelles is not doing, uh, is do, uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Sometimes we say Bruxelles <laughs> is doing too much. Sometimes we say Bruxelles is not enough. I'm mm. French, so it's the way we, 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 we speak in French. I know it only from the But the, the, <laughs> the, the, the role uh, of our federations, we don't have a strong enough European federation uh, to, to collect these uh, as we had this morning, as we have now. Uh, proposition of somehow uh, harmonized way to measure. KPI will come in a second step, but harmonized way to measure. What scenario of usage we consider when we treat the 30 years of years of a boat, as we were saying this morning. So. Uh, there is some work to do, uh, but I'm not afraid about the change. I'm afraid no, no. we don't no, no. change. I'm afraid we don't coordinate the change. Uh, but the change is needed, and they will not have one change. They will have a collection of change depending on the usage, and there is no certitude on which technology to use. No, That's why see everybody's working on it, so I totally okay. agree with you, but every, everybody's doing his own thing. And, and, and then to your point, What's the right thing to do? When, yeah. when, are we, when are we making an impact? Are we having an impact by launching a 2.5 horsepower electric engine? Well, you will have a good market in Amsterdam in 2025. Absolutely, so <laughs> that's, that's, that's good, so that's good. But I, I, it won't power my Sea Ray uh, 45 footer or 40 footer. But, but uh, at, the end, at the end, the one that makes the change is the customer. I mean, the, the, yeah. the, the generation of today are different than the generation of tomorrow, which will be different from the generation of the day after tomorrow. So, so the shift will come. So we have to, 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 uh, to well, prepare this industry to the change. But it's not new. There were many revolutions in many industries. Uh, and of course, we'll adapt. Um, the way we organize this, uh, this change between the specialists in Europe for a European market in the US, the demand might be slightly different at one time, might be accelerating in another time. Uh, uh, the, the behavior are, are, are different from one region to the other. So 
but uh, it's an interesting period. In, in that pool, you talked about the, the, the startups, and the, is there also, um, this question, I don't know, it's, I, I guess it, it is relevant. Is there also, do you know if there's uh, work being done on alternative fuels? Because if we, if our business, if we can put an alternative CO-free, carbon-free fuel in our engines, problem solved. Yeah. And we'll do it tomorrow. Um, well, just on that point about tomorrow, so we've got a big question. I know it's going to be difficult for you to answer, but um, the LED light bulb point is, is a great example that we've all adopted it because it's easier, it's cheaper to run, uh, it, it's, it's a better solution. Uh, and you can do it quite quickly. And b as the infrastructure kind of representation, um, nothing happens in our sector quickly. Um, there are customer demands, there are customer trends, there are things that people would like to see tomorrow that take a long, long time to deliver from an in infrastructure perspective. Trying to install charging networks is going to take a long, long time, even if we do get funding, support, and, and decisions. Uh, but understanding that direction, again, I'll come back to this point. I'm sorry to keep I'm sweating it a little bit now. But uh, if I'm going to plan um, a, a, a huge so solar regeneration, water desalination solution for a, an independent off-grid marina op uh, operation, that's going to take me a long time. And I need to know I'm going in the right direction. I need to know that I am satisfying some KPIs and performance limits. Uh, and I need everyone around me to come with me to know that the customer will be able to enjoy these changes that we invest in. And if we limit that with limited concessions, confusion about legislation, that just extends the timeline. That makes it very difficult for us to make that commitment. We're very happy to make the commitment. It's an open door. You are pushing against an open door. Um, the customer will dictate in the end. Um, they will make their choices. Uh, but if we're going to build a new marina, I can't do that in a week. I need a little bit longer. <laughs> One month is OK. <laughs> well, I think, I think the, the topic I want to just bring on, back to the Amsterdam topic, that is policy driven by the local government mm. or yes. any population influence? It's, it's a government, so it's, a, it's a, the city council that decided that, I think five, so step one was that uh, no more two-stroke engines. And then step two is, uh, but it's, the, it's a city. But, but is it population accepted? Is it, is it welcomed by the population? Or? <laughs> well, the, uh, not really, but okay. we are an easy target. I mean, the boaters won't go striking on the street because we are, our, our image is not always, it's like, it, it's, it's discretional. It's, we, we don't, you don't need to boat. You need to drive a car. If diesel prices go up, people go on the street. If boat prices go up, <laughs> not in the newspapers. So it's, it's not supported by the voters, of course, um, but it does drive innovation. I agree. It does drive, I mean, the bulk of the electric boats you will see here at the show are, I think 50% is, is Dutch innovation because they have a market for it. Yeah. But if you look at those prices, then you will see that the demand and the potential customers that are out there it's it's narrow. It, it is really, 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 really small. So let, let me contribute something to this. Um, um, it, it's it's a it's a matter of fact that the electric motor is by far cheaper uh, in the production than uh, at the same scale, yeah, uh, com um, compared with a diesel engine, for example, by far cheaper. And uh, the reason why the electric motors are still so expensive is very simple. It's the scale. Uh, it's, uh, they produce a couple of hundred, couple of thousand, depending on what size of, of electric engines. The engines that we install our boats are built one or two. What we order, they build. It's unbelievable. There is nothing on stock. There is not 500 or 1,000. They build this single engine or motor when we order it. Yep. It's unbelievable. And, and safety and is also a very important aspect. Yeah. Because a small portable electric engine, 48 volts, fine. It's touch. There, there's a word for it. You can touch it even when your hands are wet. It's fine. You won't die. But if you go to uh, a little bit higher speed and powers, so you're talking 350 volts. You don't want to be on the water with 350 volts if it's not 
110% secured. And that's also eating a lot of, because exactly as that you costs said, money. It, it's one-offs. It's yeah. one solution for one model. It's another yeah. solution for another model. Yeah. And that, that, is, that is not making it easier to... You're right, right but it's true that, that, that one thing is the safety, reliability of the system, of the system, and we, we are progressing, but we are at the beginning of the story. And one thing is uh, how, we me, how we manage to, to bring people to water in a massive, as many people as possible. We, are, we, are in a, we cannot be only elitist. We cannot, and, and it has to be a mitigated solution, and it will take time as well as it took time. No one, I mean, there are not so many people buying a Tesla today, even if it is sexy. However, they moved the car industry. They, they, they moved Volkswagen, they moved the French, they moved the Italian, they moved the American to move forward. So the, the trend is there. Is it a unique solution for the car industry? Of course not. Yes, the alternative propulsion, the, the, the synthetic fuel will come as well in auto, and when it will be ready for auto, Five years later, we will start, as always. And, and, and so that's why the question is, do we wait for the e-fuel and, 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 and freeze a bit the electric? No, we have to make, a, in parallel, different shifts, and different shift on different type of usage, on different type of boats, and even on the same boat, on the different type of usage. I want to go very fast with this boat, or rather use this boat with my family. It's, it's not Absolutely. the same solution. Absolutely. So it's always a combined solutions but that has to move forward. And, and the way we measure it, okay, A, B, C, D, E, uh, let, let's see in the future how we can be able to make an A, B, C, D, E ranking we're, we're, of the energy we're consumption. We're in a transition phase. Yeah. Today we're in a transition uh, phase. Automotive, it took 10 years, 15 years to make a transition. Years. We've got 10 years. And, and it's a massive volume industry. Yeah, we've got 10 years now to build our transition in a phased approach. As you say, it's not one solution. No. It's multiple solutions in parallel yeah. that are all going to improve the way we operate boats. Because usage has been talked about both this morning and this afternoon session, that how we use boats will have to change. The mindset, yeah. as Michael said, the mindset will change. Mm -hmm. No one needs to do 25 knots. No one does. No one does 25 knots. It's uncomfortable. So we have to change the mindset of how we operate and how we enjoy yachting. Exactly. Because I'm going to ask another question to all of you is, how many of you are now seeing the, and maybe Sea Ray is the starting point, and your smaller boats, Bruno. How many people are now getting into yachting at a very early age and starting their journey? Because that worries me that they're, they're not starting at grassroots. We all started at small boats. I started sailing dinghies. How do we all start, and how do we get them to start now? Because that's the other phase we have to go through to excite and inspire the younger generation to start with a 20-foot totally. Sea Ray or even get straight into electric. Yeah, what's, and, what's our strategy? And, and, and what do the, does the new generation expect when they start? Do they start? That's the question. But when they start, what do they expect from the start? Uh, and, and this is moving a bit. And, and we're in a challenging uh, situation for the moment. If you are a starting boater, there are long lead times. Yes. Entry-level models are expensive. Yep. The second-hand market is very, very uh, empty. So it's, uh, it's, it's not helping. Uh, so we're, again, come back to those boat clubs. We're trying with, to, to get people on the water in that way. Um, but it's what we, as, as a Brunswick, uh, as group, trying to focus on is uh, looking at our entry-level models to, to try and get those people on board go downsize on options, on horsepowers, to make sure that putting maybe a cheaper trailer, but at least to get those people on the water, they're going to be disappointed after the first uh, holiday, so they're going to move up, which is great. But that is that, it's that getting on the water, and it's, it's uh, in a lot of cases, it's all a matter of budget. Yeah. Everybody wants to be there, but it's, it's that budget thing. Uh, let and me, that, that's what we try to do. Autonomy as well. Let me budget. add something regarding budget, because I, I, I probably interrupted myself before. Um, so um, I think the scale is the thing. And you said before, 95% are the smaller boats. 5% are the bigger ones. So for the smaller ones, they have the scale, because there are many boats. And I'm absolutely sure, maybe not next year, 
But in, uh, in the next two, three, five years, we will see much cheaper electric motors and much cheaper batteries. So it is the transition time, in my opinion, will be a few years. Because if you go now to, this, to these halls, uh, you will see um, many brands that were not existing two years ago. Yes. And this is, like this the is ugly amazing. light bulbs. This is amazing, and, and you will see many producers that d deliver, uh, co let's compare it with a torpedo. It's about 2,000 euros for a, for a one kilowatt motor. It's a lot of money. But I'm sure you will get a very similar motor in two or three years for 1,000, and in five years for 500. Yep. And then it's more than comparable uh, to, an, to a, a diesel ba or fuel-based uh, outboard, because this is still at, I don't know, 1,800, whatever, the yeah. small, smallest ones, yeah? So what I, what I want to say is, for the majority that have the big numbers, there will be solutions very soon because the price will go down with the number. Mm. For the big boats, the minority, um, it does not really make a big difference uh, because on a bigger boat, the propulsion system, including the energy system, of an electric boat is not more expensive than a conventional drivetrain with a conventional diesel-based power supply. For the simple reason, uh, because to get the same amenities as on a battery-powered boat, you have to invest a lot of money on a diesel-powered boat because it requires probably not one, but two generators. You have two big diesel engines. Uh, you have to have a big uh, um, battery bank because without that, you have the generator running day and night. Yep. Uh, so in the end, the overall price uh, is about the same because we know it from our boats. And that means for the bigger boats, there is no change in price, it will, won't go up. Mm. For the smaller one, yes, today you're absolutely right. But I think in a very few years, we will have better prices for the, for the majority of the, of the boats, for the smaller ones below 40 feet. Mm. As Mike, Michael, as Felix said, other industries will fast track this process. Yeah. Automotive, truck, land-based projects will fast track yeah. innovation technology to downsize and decrease price. Yes. It's going to happen. Yeah. And it's the same with LED. LED was driven not by uh, a small industry, but the whole industry. Yes. We have to just be patient and develop a phase transition. Yeah. yeah. Coming back to your uh, question about um, how do we inspire the young to take part in boating? How do we bring new people to the industry? Um, the marina's role in that is to be open. Um, I think the, the age of the closed yacht club with big security gates is over. Um, it needs to be open, it needs to have, there needs to be a, a, a freedom to walk within that infrastructure, to walk within that uh, estate uh, and enjoy the restaurant. Uh, it's good for the whole economy for the boater at the end of the day to go on that charter boat, um, to launch their SUP. Um, marinas are a facilitator. Uh, we, well, it's a we, community, isn't it? It's a community. Absolutely. Yeah. But not a, not a closed community. Um, if I think about uh, a few <laughs> of the marinas that we, we might own and operate in city centres, uh, they don't have gates. Um, four or 5,000 people per day may use this as their walking route for their health and well-being, to take their dogs, to look at the beautiful boats. Uh, that's something we should welcome and applaud. Um, the, boat's is, the boat is safe. You know, no one's going to cause a problem at all. However, uh, the people need to know that they can access this. This is not something super elite. You can sit next to these boats. You can actually be part of the marina lifestyle, the community. We, our doors are open. Um, our role in that is to, to accept and understand that and uh, make sure people don't feel they can't walk across the threshold. Felix, the younger generation, what's... what's <laughs> <laughs> not me. Oh, we are. What, what, is, what, is, what is the Brussels strategy for the younger generation? Um, what we have is... Um, uh, and and that's, that links to something which is happening here in Hall 14. Um, love the ocean. Um, we, if we talk about a sustainable blue economy, we need to make people aware what, what the ocean actually means. And, and only by going there, you actually love it more. And maybe also by missing it if you are in the mountains, but, but that's a different thing. Um, so uh, we, we have launched a, a number of initiatives to um, engage youth 
in loving the ocean. It's an EU for Ocean initiative, which, which brings together uh, campaigners and, and, um, and schools and, and others that really teach uh, children how you actually, um, yeah, what, what the ocean does, how, how it produces all the oxygen we need and you know, half of the oxygen we need and, and, and so on, and um, how much biodiversity is out there. You, you, can, can, you can start with collecting plastic from a beach or, or, or stopping the plastic to reach the drain, but um, soon you learn that there's much more in terms of biodiversity and everything else, and that's how you attract to them, uh, you're attracted to it. And that's how I think you get to water sports, you get to, to uh, see other things. And if you, if you make a low, low entry, uh, low barrier uh, entry marina where you can do, I don't know, stand up paddling and then, then you see the boats, that's the first step maybe to have a, some vessel on the water which, which then brings you to other things. And our customers are probably the most consensus about that because they want to swim in it, they want to fish in it. Yeah. And that's, that's something that we can contribute to that and that's what we see in our customer base we need clear water mm. so that's for us very important yes, so, we do. Yep. yeah yeah michael i'm going to just turn this back to you because you're the i don't care if we call you a startup in yachting is that fair only because i i, I want to understand the customer base that you've got into silent yachts are they existing yacht owners who moved into silent or are they first time silent <laughs> You got the point. Um, more than 50% of our buyers uh, are first-time yacht owners. Unbelievable. They buy an 80-foot boat um, without having even owned any kind of boat before. Unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, it's a mere fact that they do it for one very simple reason. This is at least what they tell us. Um, because we ask, <laughs> we are we're curious. Um, they would have bought the boat long before. They ever liked the sea, yeah? to be on the ocean. Sailing boat, no option, because they can sail, hassle and ropes and, you know, the inclination, the best wife of, of all doesn't like the inclination. And, uh, and power boat, no option. Smell, fumes, uh, stinky, and pollution. Imagine 200 liters per hour, unbelievable. I, cannot, I, can, I could not do that, yeah? So powerboat, no option. Sailboat, no option. They found a solution. And this is, this is a mere fact. This is very surprising, but that's a fact. Yeah. And what is the typical age range? Is there a new generation that's starting silent? Um, let's say... Um, the profile maybe is a little bit different. It's typically, we have a lot of techies. Yeah? Um, IT industry, electronics, whatever. Techies, yeah? uh, early adopters, first movers. Um, and, we have, and we have younger, younger clients that you would not expect to buy an 80-foot boat. Uh, they have the money. And again, they probably never would have bought a boat uh, if they wouldn't have found a solution to do it uh, in a silent way without pollution, without uh, consuming fuel or very little fuel, um, and without a sail. But what problems have you faced from a policy perspective, if any? Or have you been. Have you had to do things all yourself, or have you worked with policy or adapted yourselves to meet the regulation? Um, we have never received any funds. Um, we tried to apply, but it did not work. We were not smart enough. <laughs> Same for us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, we know that there are a lot of funds, but I don't know who gets them, because <laughs> I think we deserve them. <laughs> However, <laughs> um, the... Uh, I think, I think the pressure is coming, from my personal perspective, it's coming from the, from the customer. Uh, and, and any change uh, to a new system, um, if, it's, if it's a healthy change, uh, is not coming from politics, it's coming from the people that simply say, I want it. 
And this is, this is, this is our impression. And actually, we only, we only uh, supply what the customer is asking for. Uh, in the end, um, our, our profile of our product uh, changed, changed a lot from the very beginning. If you look at our very first boat, <laughs> if you look at the boats now, uh, they're completely different because the client told us what he wants. And, and I also had to adapt my philosophy to that uh, because I understood that my philosophy is right for me, right for some other people, but not for everybody. And, and this is something that we need to understand and we need to build what the, what the client re requires. Of course, we can gu guide him, yeah? Uh, we can recommend and in a, in a, in a certain, um, certain amount he will follow. He will follow our recommendations, but the market dictates what we have to build. Yeah. I guess the challenge here is that that's back to this low volume point. Um, we talk about mass numbers, the LED light bulb, the electric engine, electric motor, all of that comes with scale. Uh, and this approach is quite limited, um, yeah. sadly. Um, I absolutely know that if you were to tell my company that we, were, we could extend our leases or concessions by five years, by installing uh, electric recharging points for boats, they'd be installed in, in every single site. This lack of um, collaboration, communication, understanding what the target is, means that we're, we're all compromised, sadly. Uh, the customer will make their own decisions. They will make demands on Sunreef, on Silent. Uh, but regrettably, you're probably only able to produce a limited number of yachts that uh, will impact the market overall have a small impact. If you want a large impact, it's got to come from the policy. It has to be uh, driven by decisions being taken. The Amsterdam example is uh, very real, uh, and it will happen. There'll be casualties for sure, uh, but it will take a step forward. Uh, it will move. Um, getting that coercive, clear direction is super important. No, but that's right. That, that, that's the same for us. We have 10,000 boats a year. And it's not with one solution, solar panel, that will treat the 10,000 customers that we deliver every, every year, which means on every of the 10,000, there are various demand, various customers. You are different from your customers, or 10,000 customers are all different. So, yeah. so wh what's important is to move forward on each of the blocks which are represented to each of them. No, they will not have one solution. Solar panel will not be the solution for everyone. It's one of the solutions for one given market, for one given type of use, for one given type of customer. And yes, they will have a need for electric recharger in your marinas, but not on all the berths. Yeah, probably sure. five, probably 10, and maybe when 10 will be filled, we will invest the next 10 and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of privilege to, be, to, to access to the 10, and, and then you buy the boat because you can access to the one which is electric, like in the car in Paris, or in Dusseldorf, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so so that, that, that's a progressive move. Uh, and it's good to have initiative that makes one move, it's good to have massive move as well. Uh, and, and that's a good panel for that as well knowing that the goal is to continue to deliver 10,000 boats and maybe one day more, but progressive in terms of impact on the planet, because if not, it will not be 10,000 anymore, because the customer will not buy that anymore. Yeah. Correct. And, uh, and the employees will not come to make these boats anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So Felix, where is the money? <laughs> As I said. The question is for you. We need <laughs> private money. <laughs> yeah, but, but there could be, if you look at the profile of our customer and you look at the demand and requirements, you've got customer investment, and you've got CVC investing in marinas, a huge private equity group. But there's always talk about EU money being available for clever, smart solutions or future thinking ideas. What is our opportunity? And how do we access or explore these type of partnerships, which will fast track electrification of marinas or help businesses like Michael's and Silent Yachts to innovate fully? Because this is the gap we have, I feel, in the market mm -hmm. today. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult question because, I, as, as I said in the beginning, it's, uh, the, any public European money is always only going to be, to be a drop in the ocean. We, ha we have calls in this. And we had, for example, to, to give you an example, uh, when we started this Blue Invest, which was the idea to bring uh, small and medium enterprises that have, are innovative in the blue economy to the market, um, 
we tried to attract investors and we made calls on a yearly basis um, to, uh, well, to, to, where, to apply for these things. Like, and this call would have a volume of 20 million euros for the whole of Europe, for all the blue economy, from aquaculture to coastal tourism to uh, renewable energies. So just to give you an idea of how much that is a drop in the water. What we have done now is we have pooled the money over a number of years. We are no longer doing these calls ourselves. We are not giving them out from, from the EU because also if you look at the whole of Europe, the demand that is there, uh, it's far too much work for a public administration to be dealing with such things. Um, if you want to use public, uh, I mean, taxpayers' money efficiently. So now we have given that money to a fund where we have attracted the European Investment Bank, the European Innovation Fund. We have um, 500 million in that fund. And with private investment, we hope to come to 1.5 billion. Yep. And we have set up a, a mechanism, an, an advice mechanism and assistance mechanism that brings a community of investors together, or a community of SMEs, and so it's not dedicated at boating or marinas, but at the blue economy as a whole, bringing the different uh, people together. And there's um, people help. I mean, I see in this sector there are, are a lot of entrepreneurs. What I'm talking about with this, with this or what we're addressing with this other fund is a lot of people like scientists, marine biologists who have developed something new, who have a, a brilliant idea but who have no clue about commercial uh, activities. So there's trainings on how these people can make up a business model and go to an investor and pitch. Um, that's, that may not be as relevant here because, I, I, as I said, there's, there's more an entrepreneurial no, but the, but spirit. Going back well. to Michael's, but there are plenty of startups with really cool ideas. Yeah that need support. Yes, and, and that support is there. So to at least the support to, to get ready to attract investors and, and, and talk to them and make them known, and then scale up later. Yeah. yeah. The other question I have, Bruno, for you, because obviously, are you the biggest manufacturer in the market? Together with one week, I think. Uh, Sorry? Depending on the segments, but we, yeah. we share this. Uh, okay. in, in, volume, uh, in volume, I don't think so. In value, probably a bit more. Yeah, on the board side. So I'm going to focus in on Beneteau for a little bit. All right. What I'm interested to know is how much are you investing in, let's say, your supply chain or the future <coughs> as an organization? Not enough. <laughs> OK. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm trying no, to... No, not enough. I mean, uh, not enough, but the maximum we can in a reasonable conditions. We invest on inland water. We invest uh, with our suppliers. We invest on boats. That we, 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 it's not only a question of how, do we in, how much do we invest. The question also is how in the normal investment that we do, that take into account sustainability. We, if we put sustainability in a separate corner of the organization, you're lost. You have a corner, you say one million, and it's, uh, you, it's justifying your sustainability uh, logo. OK, no. The question is how you embed sustainability in the way you design boats, in the way you design engines, in the way you design performance, in the way you, you, you adapt. We launched Delphia. We are very proud to have the Delphia boat, which is commercialized with 30% uh, electric. It was not clear at the beginning how much would be the tech rate. We'll see what will be the future. We said it will be 100% electric in a few years. So how much? It, it's more how, how all the investments we do are taking that into account progressively in a more and more important way. Uh, but at the condition that we don't make it too early, because if you make it too early, it's useless. And then it's discouraging. We, we, we make more than what we communicate on, because what, what we what we do is to, to be sure it works, not to test. We showed in Paris show uh, uh, our first uh, 44 boat. We are very proud of that because it was the first time we were making a, a, a serial boat, not a prototype, a serial boat in a plant with a full helium resin, fully recyclable, uh, with the torpedo electric propulsion, with the tech replacement through Iroco, with the um, um, biosourced uh, material for small parts. We are very proud in one year to have shifted the team 
Okay, just make a boat in one, in one year, uh, with resin uh, recyclable, with electric and so on. It's not a big investment, it's a big energy of the team to have reached this goal, and we are very proud to show it in Paris. And it was the, the most important boat we were showing at this moment. So it's more how strategic is part of your daily decision-making process and how you embed the team around that. And how the team feel you are embedded in that, uh, and motivated on that. So, so I would say 100%. Uh, sure. But let's be pragmatic. We make boats for 10,000 people, and the 10,000 people don't look at us to be 100% sustainable or I don't buy. Uh, a lot of our customers want performance, want high speed, uh, and, and some want low speed electric, but need a structure to buy the boat inland or, or close to the coast, but don't go and cross the ocean with a full electric. We are not on the, on the fully, we have some, we have a lot on the catamarans of solar panel, but on sailboat, uh, and, and, and we like sailing as well. <laughs> <laughs> well Bruno, and it's not always like this, huh, when you sail, huh? Uh. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> that's, that's a marketing spin. But what, what I'm interested in, Bruno, in terms of, you've been in the business now, CEO of six months, what is your one, three, five year goal? The, the, the first priority was to, to put the sustainability in the, in the DNA of the team, uh, management team, but overall team. And in fact, it was not a challenge. The challenge was for us to convince that it was part of us. So that was the first year challenge. Uh, what the challenge for 2030 that we, we, we shared was to have alternative propulsion for 100% of the offer by 2030. Alternative propulsion does not mean full electric boat. Alternative and if you or alternative can be part of this. Yes. Uh, but here again, uh, if you, then it means that all our product roadmap substitution for the next decade will start by what do I embed in the boat and how I design the hull, how I design the performance, how I design the boat to embed that. How do I adapt my consumption? So, so in, in 10 years is this. In the middle, let's see where we will be, but. Uh, Okay. Ten years that this. Okay. Good. All right, I'm going to ask you all to make one statement for the future of what you'd like to see next. Michael, you can start. <laughs> what would I like to see next? Actually, I would like to see more, yeah, more electric boats on the market, more efforts uh, into this direction. Um, for, for me personally, I know I cannot speak for everybody, but for me, I think it's clear uh, that that the future is 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 electric, and um, and so I I would like to see, see more more support also from from politics um, uh, with maybe some incentives that they simply uh, like in the car industry uh, at least for these as I mentioned before for the next two three five years as there still would be a gap in the price uh, between a conventional outboard motor and an electric outboard motor uh, to at least make the decision a little bit easier. Uh, this is what, what I, I wish to see uh, so that a transition could be done in a shorter period of time. Yep. Dean? I think for us we'd like to see more of this actually, uh, collaboration, um, open topics, great discussion and a willingness uh, to work together. As I said, speed is not our friend as infrastructure. It takes a long time to do what we do. Um, and it's very hard to change direction at the drop of a hat. Um, so I think more forums like this that uh, allow us to gain more insight into what, di which direction it is actually going. Is it electric? Is it something else? Um, will be really, really helpful to us. So um, I think keeping this going is a very, very positive move. Bruno? As I said, I think we, we spend our time to benchmark ourselves with, uh, with uh, every competitors. We benchmark on the performance, we benchmark on the design, we benchmark on the, uh, on the price, we benchmark on, uh, on, uh, on different, I would say, factual items. Uh, being able to benchmark ourselves on how sustainable are we compared to, uh, not only for us, but also for the, for the customer, is something I think we all miss. So we, we, we have our own way to interpret the way we make the life cycle assessment roadmap, the one I was talking about for the next 10 years. 
but it's our pragmatic way of doing that, uh, some others doing in another pragmatic way, some another in a third way, and, and having, trying to converge on the way to assess uh, would help each other to progress. Yeah. I always said, I, I was in the automotive industry at the moment of the diesel gate, and the shift was there. Yes, CO2 emission one map, and then I saw, I was Valeo, I was not car maker. So I, wa I was seeing all the car maker shifting the way they were talking to us uh, after this shift. And, and, but they had already somehow the harmonization, the KPI, the way that we can assess. And probably this is something we have to work together. Uh, uh, so not it, no, it cannot be, it must not be a, a, a complex rule which is different from the reality of the business. And there might have probably different rules on the different segments. But uh, the way to assess the life cycle assessment sustainability impact is probably uh, one of the things that we could work on in the, in the weeks and months to come to adapt the roadmap accordingly. Felix? At the risk of repeating what has been said, um, I, I said before that there's a, a, a strong entrepreneurial spirit, and um, but at the same time, that's a bit the spirit. Well, we'll do it for for ourselves. That's what I heard from you. You you did it for yourselves 15 years ago. Um, you you brought the example of okay, it's fine to invest in one electric thing, but then we brought a team together and they all worked on on this one project where it's not just the engine, it's, it's also the, the, uh, the resin and, and, and how you, you put things together. So it's really the, the, the collaborative effort and the work with policymakers that, that I would like to see in the, in the years to come. And I think this innovation doc is, is a very good first step um, to, to bring this, to, uh, this talk together. We've heard this morning, I think over the next nine days, uh, on almost each panel, there will be somebody from the European Commission, from different departments in the Commission. So you are talking to policymakers and to regulators, and, and that, that will be an added value and maybe a first step for, for more to come. Yeah. Hans? Well, the big advantage with those questions is be last, because I want all those things, <laughs> and, I, and I don't have to tell them. So let me wrap up with saying, I want as many people on the water as possible. Even if in a canoe, small sailing dinghy, a big yacht, a power boat, a rowing boat, it's all good. But we need to keep and get more people on the water because that's our core. That's, they pay our salaries, they drive our business, and that's what we need. They are the future. They're the future. All right, panel, thanks a million for your time. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. End Thank of you day one. Much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.